Hi everyone, today I wanna to continue the series about pattern synonyms. Um, this will be the third in that series, and we're gonna look at pattern synonym matchers, which are, is, is the way that GHC implements pattern synonyms internally. Um, okay, so let's, let's, let's dive in here. So the, 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 the goal is to figure out how if, if, can we reduce the idea of a pattern synonym into something that, that already exists. So as a, as a quick example, right, if I write a pattern synonym like this, pattern three matches against three, um, and of course this is going to have an error, let's see, can it tell me the error? I doubt it. No, do block, no, 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 oops, don't want that. Um, oh, by the way, I keep on getting these funny indentations. I don't know how to turn that off while still keeping other useful indentations. At the top level, it always goes in one. If you know the answer to that, write a comment. Um, pattern synonyms. Okay, so let's turn that on. Okay, so this 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 works nicely. But now I say I want to reduce this to something we already know. I want to be able to write a function that essentially operates the way that this three pattern synonym does. So if it matches the three, then it goes in one direction. If it doesn't match the three, it goes in another direction. Um, and to first approximation, we can write it looking a little bit like this. So we can take three matcher, and then if it hits the three, then we have yes, no. If, if it hits the three, then we go to yes. For anything else, we're going to go to no. Um, and, and that's kind of what the matcher should do, right? It matches against this is this first argument is going to be the thing called the scrutiny, the thing that we are looking at, the thing we are scrutinizing, the scrutiny. This is a term that we use a lot in GHC. Um, and, and then we need something to do in case of success and something to do in case of failure. Um, and so that's going to end up looking a little bit like this. Of course, nothing is ever so simple. So to really demonstrate the full glory of matchers, um, we're going to need something that is a little bit more glorious. So we need, we're going to have a data type here. I'm going to call it the kitchen sink. Um, and the kitchen sink is going to have one argument here, uh, milk ks. And it also needs an existential because it's going to be the kitchen sink of everything. It's going to have a bound uh, constraint here, show b, and then fields of type B and A, and then this will result in a kitchen sink A. And we already have lots of requests for extensions. Um, so here it says I want rank n types. I actually don't want rank n types. I just want gadgets. That should do it, I think. No? No, it still wants rank n types. I don't want that because I don't have any. Well, actually, I will need rank n types. Let me just turn that on uh, because we will need it. Uh, now what? Oh, of course, A isn't in scope, so let's bring A into scope. That was silly of me. Okay, good. Excellent. So we have our kitchen sink type. Now I'm just going to make a pattern synonym for mukks here. So we're going to call this uh, pattern, um, we're just going to call it ks. It's going to have one argument, even though mukks has two. And let's see. So this x, oh, what do I want to say? I want to say mukks of x3. And ooh, look at this, we already get a nice inferred type here, the correct inferred type with two different constraints. So if you watched last week's video, you would have seen that this first part here, let me accept that type, this first part here, these are the required constraints. And that's because I'm using a pattern match three here. So that means that this A parameter uh, to kitchen sink, it really needs to have an eek class and a num class. Um, so that I can match against three. And then here, this is a provided constraint because when I do the match, we're gonna learn that show B is true. Uh, though I don't have to do it, I'm going to choose to explicitly quantify my variables. So here we have for all A and for all B, and here A is a universal and B is an existential. Okay, so this is our kitchen sink pattern that really has everything in it. So now I wanna make KS matcher. So KS matcher is going to be kind of like three matcher in that here I'm going to do the actual pattern match. So mkS x3, and then we're going to have yes and no. And in this case, I want the answer to be yes. So this type checks. There's a, there's a, why is there a warning? Oh, pro, oh pattern matches are non-exhaustive. Let's get rid of that warning. So here we're going to have other, yes, no, and this is going to be no. Um, and already this is working out, and I'm surprised I'm not getting errors about unused variables. Maybe I disabled that somehow. Um, 
in any case, this this is this all makes us happy, except that it's not quite powerful enough. Because although this is yes, and that means, let's accept the type, that means that I can um, uh, sort of go into a success branch, I can't pass any information to it. I really want to be able to pass X to it because I have extracted that out from the pattern match, right? If I use KSX on the left-hand side of a function definition, I want X to be in scope on the right. So that means that this yes needs to take X. Well, if I type yes X, now I get an error. So let's let's kill that that inferred type. And here GHC is suggesting this type, but actually we're still going to get an error. So I, I can accept that. And now, well, there's there's the yes and no have different types, it seems. And here, couldn't match expected type B arrow P2 with, ex, with actual type P1. And then there's stuff about rigid variables. Um, I could try to, I don't know, decompose how this error message came about. But, but the problem here really is that this yes is taking X, but X's type is existential. Right, this x, when I do a MOOC KSX, this is this type B, but this type B is existentially bound inside of MOOC KS, the MOOC KS constructor. Um, there's no way to just pass it to, or rather, there's no way to write the type of yes that will accept B, um, or, or there's no simple way. I have to make this a higher rank type. So I need to say that for all B, B arrow P, and then once I say this, then both of these should really be P as well. Um, so what's going on here is that this, yes, this success function needs to be able to work for any type B, and that's because I don't know what it's going to be. Um, we also can actually do a little bit better, not just any B, but it's a B that has whoops, a show instance. And that's because when I do this pattern match, I also learn that B has, has a show instance. Um, this this is really related to my show up here. If I wrote something else, if I said eek b, for example, now I get an error because we don't know that um, that eek b is true. Um, but we know that show b is going to be true because I learned that from my mkks pattern match. Um, okay, let me also now write for all a over here so we can see how all of these things line up. And then we get errors because of, of p over there. So, so, so now we're, we're onto something. This is looking pretty good. Um, so here we can see the correspondence between the pattern synonym type and the different components of the matcher. Here we have my universal A, and that matches up with something that's quantified over here. Let me actually write it a little bit more suggestively like this. Um, so this A matches up with this A. These required constraints match up with these constraints here. Then my result becomes the type of my scrutiny my existential and provided end up over here along with my argument. So my argument here is B, so that B comes over here. And then this P is this result type. Um, so I'm actually going to rename P to result. Does VS Code have a thing for me to do this? Can it change all occurrences? Aha. Oh, oh, that's very silly VS Code. Shame on you. I don't want that clearly. No, no, stop, stop, don't do that. Stop, please, stop. Uh, okay, I type res. Now I just get these blanks. Very strange. Okay, but because this is the result type. Okay, um, so, so this is very nice. We have this nice correspondence between these parts and these parts. And here we can really see why it's important to separate out the universals and required constraints from the existentials and provided constraints, because in this matcher, they really end up in different places. There's one more wrinkle. Um, oh, ah, pattern synonyms. Oh, and pat, oh, this is very silly. Rank and all of my P's are gone. Oh, it's very, very silly. Oh, here, oh, oh, very shameful. Okay, anyway, I think all the P's are back. Um, so there's still one more wrinkle, and, and that is that this res here, well, what's the kind of res? It's implicitly type. Whoops. But that means that res has to be lifted. Oh, now it's complaining because type isn't imported, so let's import it. Oh, that's of course not where type comes from. Let's import uh, data.kind. We'll need x, x pretty soon though. Oh, it's, that's not the problem? Oh, kind signatures. Well, yes, we need that too. 
Um, okay, everyone's happy? Everyone's happy. Good. Um, so the problem here is that now if I do a pattern match in a context that is uh, going to return an unlifted thing, um, this type of matcher is no good. So I can, I can demonstrate this. If I say, for example, foo of ks of x equals 4 hash, where 4 hash is this unlifted thing, um, this, uh, does that type check? What, uh, no, it, it's probably very confused because I haven't enabled magic hash. Um, and then here, this does type check. It's probably pattern matches are non-exhaustive. So foo of anything else is going to be 5 hash. Um, but now if, I to if I'm to translate this use of a pattern synonym ks to use this matcher, I'm out of luck because my result really should be unlifted. And I want this matcher to work for both unlifted types and lifted types. So now I don't want res to have kind type. It needs to have type rep where rep is a runtime rep. But that will actually introduce another small world of pain. Probably first we need some, some extra... Um, uh, language extensions, but I think we're going to get more pain beyond that. Yes, we are. A levity polymorphic type is not allowed here. Um, why is that? Well, if I don't know what the representation for res is and no has type res, then there's no way I can bind a variable of that type. This is a real function. This ks matcher is going to be a real function, and that means that um, we need to be able to accept the argument. What register should we look in? Is it going to be a thunk? We don't know because we haven't specified the representation. So the solution to this little problem is to say that this is not going to be just a res, but instead it's going to be a... F oh, what, what's going on? I'm typing a key and it's not happening. Okay, it's going to have to look like this. This res, this no case, has to... Oh, now there's too many parentheses because I was typing them, but they were appearing in the wrong spot. Weird word wrapping going on, I think. Um, okay, so we have this. Let me let me actually do some formatting here to make this all a little bit more sensible. So we have stuff about the result there. Um, then we have our universal and provided. Then we have our scrutiny. Then we're going to have this sort of continuation upon success. We'll have a continuation upon failure, and then the final result. Um, this is complaining indubitably because we're missing the extension unboxed tuples. Um, and now it's happy again. And then now here we have a problem because I haven't actually passed in the argument. So no, actually has to take one of these unboxed tuples. So this is the empty unboxed tuple. And all it's saying is, is that this res, instead of actually being a res, it should be a a pointer to some code that when it runs will produce something of type res. Um, but it means now that we're not actually accepting res in a register, we're accepting a pointer to some code. Um, so this solves that particular problem. Um, and here I think we have the full glorious type of the matcher with everything accounted for, and now we really could do this foo in terms of the matcher. So to wit, um, I'll have foo prime here. And foo prime is going to take a sync. And what it's going to do is it's going to call ks matcher. It has to pass in the sync. That's the scrutiny. Upon success, it's going to ignore x and return 4 hash. And upon failure, it's going to ignore my unbox tuple and return 5 hash. And does this all check out? It does. It has this the right type, and everything is good. Um, there's one other tiny eensy weensy wrinkle and that is if we have a pattern synonym that has no uh provided constraints and no arguments we need to do this unbox tuple thing here even in the success case uh for this sort of the same reasons i'm not going to demonstrate that here um but it turns out that that producing one of these matchers is a little bit hard why is this useful to you perhaps something i should have said toward the beginning of the of, of the video um, so why is this useful? You don't actually have to write these matchers. It can be helpful to know what GHC is doing behind the scenes. Um, it gives you an idea of maybe some performance-oriented characteristics around this stuff. Um, it's also fun to see how we can reduce pattern synonyms into uh, more primitive uh, features. Um, oh, one last thing. If you ever end up looking at the core program that is deduced from a pattern synonym, you'll see this stuff. This really is how GHC does it, and so it could be useful there. Um, I hope this has been interesting. Next week, 
week, I think we're going to round out the series showing how pattern synonyms using all of these features that we've looked at um, can actually be used to implement unsafely features that would normally take sort of exponential amount of space to do safely when we're using lots of fancy types. Um, thanks very much for watching. So long.